of course, a, a billboard that is in that state of, of decay and in that wonderful abstract way just completely reminds me of uh, my involvement with, with uh, Aaron Siskin and all of the understanding that he imparted to me on the essence of abstract uh, expressionism. Had it been a literal picture, had we simply had, had I started printing for a photographer who simply wanted, you know, a, a more traditional kind of print, that would have failed me. But with Aaron, it was truly an emotional um, experience and, and never was a print designed to duplicate a previous print. I photograph dams a lot and I photograph uh, bodies of water in relation to dams. I just kind of go with the flow and photograph it knowing that I will be able to return to that and, and re-enter it and reform it a little bit. And, and in that sense, I feel more like a painter than a photographer. That's the first real picture I've seen today. See, that to me is, is everything. You know, you got this extraordinary man-made wall of cement made, made to keep something back. Then you have this extraordinary boulder that was incorporated in the cement that's not man-made, but well, it's the source of the cement. And then you have the fluidity of this water dripping, finding a way as water always does, finding a way through and eating away at that cement, eating away at the rock and these beautiful oak roadway of a, of a oak platform atop of it. And the layers continue. It's about layers. It's about layers of meaning found in layers of landscape and layers of structure. And it's got layers of time in it, the ancient history of that boulder, the period when the cement was made, a different period when the oak platform was laid and the wall above it, all to make a dam, all to hold back something and always water finding a way through it. And that's what I see, that's what I think about. And those are the things I try to bring into a picture for others to feel. In an analogy to music, the negative is the score and the print is the performance. And so uh, in some ways I have extended the performance by increasing the range of possibilities that I, I give the print. Monoprint to me is, is this unique fusion between accident and design on that particular print. And it is the uniqueness of those two ideas, clashing, merging, fusing. One of the things that I've tried to think out is applying the developer in a, in a different way. All I have in this tray is water. I'm just soaking the print because it needs to be wet in order for me to apply a powder developer. The minute I add water, the whole uh, thing can change dramatically. Now here already, this is developed really well. I have to run it through some stop bath. If it's neutralized, I, I usually start with a little, a little rheostat. I'm fixing the bottom area, which will maintain some of the traditional black and white tones. I've got a couple things of lights here. It's chromatic fog. It's light fog on photo paper that's causing almost all of the tonal change here. The rest of it is kind of filled in because I blended it like I had developed it in a tray simply by taking the powder form and, and uh, bringing water over that area. There we go. I'm trying to move it and stop it at the same time. The whole print can be, can be worked on some more. And by applying a polysulfide, you'll see in a second, uh, that it very quickly can change the tone of that sky. And so now you can see that that sky that used to be quite orange in tonality is simply now um, 
almost purple like. So in the end, you know, I kind of end up with uh, with something, but it's up to me to decide whether um, a, a picture is successful or not on all of the criteria and all of the feelings and all of the um, sensibilities that I can bring to a picture that that make me the the author of that picture and make me responsible for its uh, its impact on on another human being. There you have it.